Hey guys, it's time to check out the gaming performance for the Nexus 5. You can see the games are going to run right here. It's six pretty high intense games, so it should be a good test. I'll also include the FPS meter so we can actually get an accurate reading of the performance and I'll be including a system monitor widget as well so that we can see if the device throttles and just how much of an effect that will have on our games. So yeah, here we go. So we'll start off with Grand Theft Auto Vice City and this is one of the toughest games to actually play on a mobile device. You'll also notice I've maxed everything out, so let's see how it handles it. So I played about a minimum of 5 minutes on each game, so altogether you're looking at about 30 to 40 minutes of straight gaming here, barring the fact that of course I had to change the game in between. While driving on a straight road you're looking at around 30 to 35 FPS, when you start taking the turns quickly that drops off to around 23 to 24, but it's still relatively smooth. Let's not forget this is at maximum draw distance and at maximum resolution and when you take those two things into account it's actually pretty impressive. Checking out the CPU monitor, I'd say around 90% of the time only two cores are active, sometimes activating the third when it needs it. Would it be smoother if we forced all four cores online? Probably yes, but it would get a lot more heat and therefore reach the throttling point quicker, so it's not really worth it. We're still at the maximum frequency at 2.3 GHz, so we haven't been throttled just yet, and I've got to say while playing it at maximum settings, it actually felt relatively smooth, you know, there was no major frame drops, you could easily play it on this if you wanted to. I think we averaged around 28 FPS, a maximum of 34 and a minimum of 15. Now averaging 28 FPS isn't bad. That being said, if you pull the draw distance and screen resolution down a bit, you'll notice you get a much smoother game while the game still looks really good. So it's still pretty sharp, I think I put the screen resolution to about 70%, draw distance to about 60 and you can see we're getting a much higher FPS here, about 40 to 50, pretty, pretty awesome here. Here and it just feels that little bit smoother and makes the game a little bit more enjoyable than playing it on absolute maximum. Next up we got Asphalt 8 and you can see here it is set to the highest graphic settings. That was actually set by default so yeah let's see how it goes. One thing to note guys, I believe this game has a frame limiter, so although it will randomly spike above 30, I do believe it has the cap because I tested this on the very low settings and the FPS really didn't increase over 30, so yeah, take that into account here. Performance wise, yeah, the Nexus 5 can handle this game easily. It's You can see here we're averaging 30, a maximum of 40 and a minimum of 29, so yeah, it's very, very smooth. Now what about this area in the map, you can see that it's not using the 2.3 GHz maximum frequency anymore, it's gone down to around 2 GHz, so this is the start of the thermal throttling. That being said, you're not going to notice any real performance here, you can see the FPS really hasn't taken any hit, we're still around 30 FPS, averaging 30, and yeah, it's very very smooth, so although we've started thermal throttling here, you haven't taken any hit really in the FPS, at least in this game. So this is after about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes of gaming here. Now after about another 2 minutes I noticed that the maximum frequency has now gone down to 1.6 GHz so the thermal throttling is getting a little bit more aggressive here. That being said, this game at least hasn't slowed down at all, you can see we're still hitting the frame limiter, it's still easily around the 30 FPS mark. So we're averaging 31, we've got a maximum of 40 and a minimum of 28, so even though we've seen thermal throttling here, we really haven't taken a hit in the FPS department. So here we go with Dead Trigger 2 and I know a lot of you guys will probably want me to use the ultra settings using a modified APK but I wanted to keep everything official for this video at least, I will use the modified APK in another video. These are the highest settings you can get off the official APK, so I believe that's high. You can see we're still getting thermal throttled here down to 1.6 GHz. That being said, Dead Trigger 2 still very smooth. You can see again the FPS right now is in the 40s, 30s, there's no problems. Everything looks great, everything looks very sharp, especially on this display. So even though we can see the evidence of thermal throttling right here, we're down to 1.6 GHz all the way from 2.3 GHz, probably about 20-ish 20, 20 minutes into my total gameplay video and yeah the frame rate is still relatively high you can see we're in the 40s we're in the 30s really hasn't dipped below 30 so yeah even though like I said we are getting thermal throttled it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue as it was on previous devices just showing you again how strong the Snapdragon 800 really is. So we're getting an average of 37, a maximum of 52, and a minimum of 28. And I'm sure some of you are wondering what would be happening to the FPS if we were still running at 2.3 gigahertz. Well, I actually tested this when the device had cooled down, and the average we were getting at the same point was 43. The minimum was 37. So we have taken a bit of an FPS hit in this game. Saying that, it's still pretty smooth, but we would be a little bit smoother if we weren't being throttled. Now after about another few minutes of gameplay, you can see it dropped down to 1.2 GHz. So again, we're being throttled a little bit further than we were before. And the frame rate did take a little bit of a hit here. You can see we're now kind of in the 20s rather than before we were in the 40s, especially when there's a lot of zombies on the screen. It didn't actually stay at 1.2 for too long. You can see it's already back up to 1.6. But I guess the longer you play the game for, the more it's going to stay at that 1.2 GHz frequency. 
So this is probably about 20 to 25 minutes in on my gaming video and you can see here we're averaging 41, a maximum of 56 and a minimum of 19. So the minimum frequency has dropped quite a bit and I guess that would be down to that thermal throttling when we went down to 1.2 gigahertz. So it does drop the frames quite a bit when you get down to that sort of frequency. So I had a bit of a weird issue with Nova 3 and it wouldn't start, it kept on force closing. So I uninstalled it and reinstalled it and that took around 5 to 10 minutes so it gave the device a little bit of time to cool down and you can see here we're back up to 2.3 3 gigahertz and while it's at 2.3 gigahertz everything as you'd expect is very very smooth you can see here frame rates are excellent on Nova 3 which is a very intense game you can see we're getting around 45 to 50 FPS it felt very smooth and really awesome to play so when the action gets a little bit more intense here, you can see the frames per second drops off a bit. That's pretty natural. We're still at 2.3 gigahertz and it's still pretty much above 30 FPS the entire time. If I'm completely honest, when I was playing it, it honestly felt above 30 frames per second while I was playing it. There wasn't any major frame drops and yeah, the performance was just excellent. It felt very fast gameplay, nothing slowed down. I'm not sure the game is actually running its full effects. There were no graphical settings I could change, so that's just up to Gameloft to decide who gets what effect, but so far performance is really good. So after about a few minutes of gameplay, and yes, if you're wondering, I did die. That's why I'm replaying the same level. I'm averaging 34, maximum of 60, and a minimum of 19. Now that 19 was actually when I died and the game kind of reloaded, so we're not really going to count that. So you'll notice here we've dropped down again to 1.6 gigahertz and yes the frame rate has taken a bit of a hit here. Now before we were getting pretty much 35 to 40 fps the entire time it hardly was ever in the 20s. At 1.6 gigahertz it's pretty much in the 25 to 30 bracket the entire time. The performance on Modern Combat was very very good. It maintained a very high frame rate throughout the time I played it. I'm not sure on the effects level here. Again, it's a Gameloft game, so there's no settings to change, it's just what Gameloft decides. I'm pretty sure it's not running the full effects, but you can see here we're pretty much at the frame limiter at 60 FPS. Even after the device throttled to 1.6 GHz, gaming performance on Modern Combat was still very, very good. You can see we're still in the 50 FPS mark, so there's no problems here. Now after about another 2-3 to three minutes here you can see that it did throttle it down to 1.2 GHz but the frame rate is still pretty high. Now before we had a pretty much constant 50-60 to 60 FPS, now we're pretty much getting a constant 40-50 to 50 FPS. So yes it has lost a few frames but you're really not going to notice it's still very smooth and there really wasn't a major frame drop at any point on this game. And lastly here guys we've got Call of Duty Strike Team. Now you can see we've already been throttled down to 1.6 GHz but the frame rate is still pretty damn high. The Nexus 5 really isn't struggling at all with this game even though it's being throttled so it can easily handle it without a problem and yeah even though the graphics are pretty decent in this game it's not the best graphical game here the frame rate is still pretty high and it's very very smooth to play so yeah. So eventually again it did drop to 1.2 GHz and this seems to be the frequency where we see the biggest difference in the frames. You can see here we're pretty much in the 20s now a little bit into the 30s. When there's an enemy on the screen again at 1.2 GHz you can see we actually dropped into the teens there. So 1.2 GHz is a little bit where it starts to actually make a real effect. That being said don't forget I've been playing this for basically 30 to 40 minutes straight bar a little break before Nova. For me at least that's quite a long time to play a game on a mobile device. Now there's no hiding from the fact that thermal throttling is present on this device and maybe a custom kernel can help there but I don't think the performance loss is quite as big as some other devices when they're thermal throttled and in general I thought the gaming performance was very good here so yeah let me know what you guys think. Peace out.